Mike Strickland. I've been working on iSpan since probably 2003. Presently, I'm a consultant for them and I'm developing a floor system for their next generation. The reason for starting iSpan Systems was to try and simplify cold form steel framing. In about 1998, I started building a uh, summer home with my family. We built it with C-shapes and it was what a learning experience. I learned that, hey, there was no connections, there was very few details, it was a horrendous job trying to put this thing together. And through the whole process, I kept saying, hey, there's got to be a simpler way to do this. And so, hey, that was my mission uh, with iSpan, was to try and make everything simpler. The experiences that made me start working on iSpan was the fact that light steel frame was a, an emerging market. For many years, the industry was claiming that it's going to be the next best thing. And there was many times predictions made that it was going to have 25% market share by, say, 1998. And here I was in 2002, 2003. It still had only about a 2% market share. So I said, hey, there must be something. Somebody's missing here. That's the reason for the lack of growth. And so, hey, I took a look at this thing. I realized that, hey, in order to put cold form steel together, you needed three hands. You needed one hand to hold the screw and one hand to hold the part and one hand to hold the uh, the screw gun. So hey, it was a very difficult situation trying to put all these things together in the field. There was a lack of connections. Fire ratings were somewhat lacking. Floors vibrated when they were made out of light steel framing. There was just so many issues. So when I looked into all of this, I said, okay, this is a good market to work in and let's see how we can improve it. 1999, getting my head around how to go after this market, light steel frame. I'm learning that load distribution is a key factor. And so we built a research facility in 2000. And I went out to find people who could help me do the testing and establish the test criteria. And lo and behold, uh, Reinhold Schuster, Professor Schuster at University of Waterloo. I found he was our local authority for light steel framing. And on top of that, he was a really neat guy to talk to, a great technical resource. And I asked Reiny to come and join me as a consultant and help me develop the uh, load distribution tests. And lo and behold, he came with me. We had some great successes. And, and hey, those were the pioneer days of load distribution. We came up with some of the very first steps in load distribution, some very crude tests to learn how to make it better. And so in any event, I'm starting iSpan. I had been working with Reine. I said, okay, I've got this tremendous job if I want to do fire, structural, acoustics, and I, I've got so much stuff that I have to learn here and test in order to take iSpan to market. Reine was one of the first people I went to and said, hey, Reine, can you come and join me and uh, work with me? I could really use your help. And so he joined me. My name is Reinhold Schuster, and I am a retired professor from the University of Waterloo. I met Mike in 2001, and at that time uh, he was still uh, working for Can-Am. I had done quite a bit of work for Can-Am a number of years before that on composite slabs, so he knew what I could do. My research at the university was in cold form steel, and I still work in that area. So I received a call from Mike telling me that uh, they need my help. They were running a test on load distribution and it was uh, just outside of Toronto by the airport. There was a, a laboratory they had. So I went there and uh, witnessed this test and uh, made sure that it was done right. It was a very unique product. Uh, typically cold form steel is uh, C-sections. Everybody makes C-sections. We look at um, drywall studs, they're C-sections, joists, C-sections. A C-section is singly symmetric, which means that it, if you stand it, it, it will fall over because it's singly symmetric, not doubly symmetric, which the ice pen product is. Very unique when Mike first introduced that to me. And to me, it was exciting to work on something that was brand new. There was nothing like that anywhere in the world. 
and I doubt whether there is today. Well, Mike is one of the most clever men I have ever met in my life. We would sit and he just is clever, you know, in terms of, well, how, how about doing this? How about doing that? He has a lot of experience uh, sort of in the iron working industry. We would sit, the three of us, and, and discuss things. How should we set this up or that? And he always came up with some great ideas. I always enjoyed that with him, yeah. yeah I wish we could do it some more. <laughs> Combining that deck with a joist makes it a very economical and efficient system. There isn't much out there right now that would compete with this product. It's been an amazing trip, shall I say. Uh, Doug and I driving down there because we both live in Kitchener and um, always enjoyed going there. Uh, you know, always anxious to see are, are we getting that load? Yes, we got that load. We can calculate this load. And it, it was truly amazing to, uh, uh, to witness all of that. I had a good feeling about, right from the start, that the product would do well. Because when you uh, look at the flange, it has two thicknesses, and uh, given the right spacing of those rivets, and now, of course, the clinchers that are being used. We can develop that full compression, flange capacity. Very, very efficient product. Really enjoyed working on this and uh, much success to the company. The main problems I was trying to solve is fire, vibration, and acoustics. The fire test should be one hour in order to be able to use it in buildings six stories and less. In all of these floor systems were tested and they were all getting to maybe anywhere from 47 minutes to 53 or 54 minutes in duration. My mission was, hey, how do I get six or seven or eight more minutes out of this fire test? Our fire test passed by two or three seconds over 60 minutes. And it was a miracle. It was, that's when I knew, I said, okay, we've got a winner here. This is, hey, it had never been done before. And so, hey, one of the great things about iSpin is that we dealt with vibration. You get a very high quality floor and the vibration is controlled. So there's no more of that walking into your dining room and all the dishes are vibrating. And so acoustics, it's a case of investing a great deal of money on testing. ISPAN made that investment right from day one and they continue to do it to this day, investing in those types of tests because those are tools that you use for your architects and developers so they can make better use of our products and design and build better buildings. And that's what ISPAN can bring to these people. So probably 2004, uh, Ryan, he says, Mike, he says, I've got the greatest student in the world that should be working with us. His name's Doug Fox. He's getting his uh, master's degree. He's my understudy. Hey, we, we should have him on board. And so that's how Doug joined us. And Doug was a great asset. And I think to this day, he's uh, an absolutely wonderful uh, engineer, great asset for iSpin. My name's uh, Doug Fox. I've been with iSpan Systems LP for 15 years before it was actually iSpan System LP, back when it was Best Joist Incorporated and uh, iSpan, the name itself, didn't even exist. It was the CCFJ technology, so yeah, it started in 2004. So I was a graduate student at the University of Waterloo, working with uh, Reinhold Schuster, who is a world-renowned expert in uh, the field of cold form steel engineering. And it's quite usual for grad students to be brought into uh, the laboratories at university to do testing and help with their professor. So I would do that on occasion with Ryanie. We'd be in the lab testing rack structures or whatever else. And one day, um, this gentleman, who I would later know as Mike, came in and he had this interesting looking joist. So I thought not too much of it other than this is, this is an interesting new product. We tested it, I took that data, did what I would normally do from my uh, supervising professor for Reine and uh, got talking with Mike over a couple of times of doing this and uh, Mike eventually asked if I would do some work for him and that's how we started together. The main problem we were trying to solve was to bring in a product in cold form steel that was very easy for the customer to use. So 
uh, and particularly the installer. So not only did we want a product that was technologically superior, but we also wanted a product that was great for all the trades. So great for the installing trade, but also great for any follow-up trades that would come after it, such as mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and that. So we really, I think the biggest challenge and the biggest uh, thing we were trying to solve was uh, having a, a trade-friendly solution. I went through two iterations on iSpan. The first iteration was a three-piece joist and that took us up to the Great Recession. So now we're probably in 2009. Great Recession was devastating, but I wanted to take another bash at this thing, and I had a new design for the joist. I wanted to do it with one piece uh, versus the three piece that we started with, and I went to a friend of mine, Walter Copelair, the president and chairman of Walters Inc., and uh, proposed something to them and we ended up, we joined forces and started iSpan Systems. What are we going to do here uh, in terms of rebranding and so that we can tell people how great this joist is? I mean now we had vibration mitigation, we had great acoustic results, we had amazing fire results, we had connections that made it easier to install. Hey, we had all these great things, so hey, we needed to communicate this to the market and to our customers. We needed to rebrand this thing. Total Joyce was the name that came about, and hey, it is the Total Joyce. It has everything, and that's how the brand came about. You know, it was interesting. We had this great product called Total Joyce. The market wasn't buying the product. Hey, the biggest challenge bringing any product into the construction industry is that all the products in the construction industry have a very long life cycle. Like a brick from the Roman age is still a brick today. You know, they got some keefs in them and some different shapes, but a brick's a brick, a block's a block. And so it's very hard to get people to adopt to new ways of doing things. You know, we were struggling. We'd had a few small jobs we did. It was a struggle, so we realized all of the framing companies wanted to stick with their old way of framing, so they wouldn't buy our joists. So we said, hey, if they're not gonna buy our joists, we're gonna go in the framing business. Hey, our total joists became total stud, total framing, total truss, it's, you know. So we offered the whole package. My partner decided, he says, hey, I'm, I'm going to develop a piece of land, I'm going to put a building on it, I'm going to use total framing. So we did that, it was a beautiful building, and wow, we were putting this building up, uh, we showed it to a lot of people. From that day on, we've never looked back. That was a, one of our eye-openers to the industry, and everybody, time you'd take somebody there, we essentially had a new customer. And so hey, that's really how we uh, launched and became so successful.